what is going on guys, Smooth Racing here, back with a brand new video, and today we've got the GP3 2014 season preview. The GP3 season gets underway this weekend in Spain, and in this video we're going to be previewing the season, running through all the drivers and teams, and also having a look at the calendar, before at the end making our final top 3 prediction for the drivers and the constructors. So let's get on with the teams and the drivers then. Let's start then with the reigning champions from 2013, and that's ART Grand Prix, and they've gone with Alex Fontana, Marvin Krishofta, and Dino Zamparelli. Alex Fontana then, he's had one podium so far, he was with Jensen Motorsport for three years, had a fairly unsuccessful time there considering the car is very bad. Now this is going to be a massive step for Alex as he's moving up to, you know, as we know, one of the top teams in GP3, and it'll be interesting to see how he'll perform at the highest level of GP3, but uh, I think he'll do quite well, and I think podiums and race wins are probably possible, as with his teammate Marvin Khrushchev, who is the uh, German F3 champion, but this is actually his rookie year, so you'd suspect that Alex would have the upper hand, but you never know, because this German we know is quick from watching him in G German F3, and then Dino Zamparelli, the Brit, finished 18th with Marussia last year, scoring 12 points, this is his second year, so uh, Fairly experienced. Between the drivers, they've got five years of experience. So I think ART have gone with sort of a solid lineup, but there's no really standout driver like they had last year with Danny Fiat. That really jumps out at me as a championship winner. So I don't think any of sadly any of those three will be fighting for the championship, but we'll have to see how things pan out. Moving on to Arden International, and they've gone with Robert Visso, Patrick Niederhauser, and Jan Mardenborough. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, Jan Mard Mardenborough is my favourite driver in GP3. I watched him since he was in GT Academy. I was cheering him on then. Then, of course, he won GT Academy in 2011. And then he's been um, racing in European F3. He's Red Bull backed and he's a really hot prospect for the future. And I think he'll have a great season with Arden. As I do think Arden will have probably the strongest car um, all year round. I think ART might drop off, I think. Um, you know, Fiat sort of came strong at the end, but I think this year is going to be a bit of a change. They might start off quite well, but I think they'll really tail off towards the end. Whereas Arden will remain strong all through the season, I think really pick it up towards the end of the year. Um, moving on to the next team, then it's Korean GP. They've gone with Carmen Jorda, Jimmy Eriksson, and Santiago Urita. So Carmen Jordan then, a female driver, um, been in GP3 for two years. Her best finish was 13th. But of course, this is deceiving because you know the um, car she was in last year was not very good at all and not worthy of scoring points. So I think um, Carmen will definitely be looking for podiums and maybe even race winners. Of course, just basically her first points position, her first um, points in GP3 would be great because I know she's a great race and she's really good at flying the flag for female drivers and proving that they can be right up there with the men and uh, of course beating them on many occasions. I think she'll have the upper hand on her two teammates. Who are Jimmy Eriksson, who's has spent one year in a GP3. He finished 12th last year. He's 23 from Sweden. And then Santiago Urita from Uruguay. Um, he was placed fourth in the F3 Open. So he'll be rather inexperienced. And I think Carmen Jorda, having the more experience of the uh, uh, two teammates, will get the upper hand on them. But I don't think either, none of them can really go for the championship. I think podiums and maybe even a race win is possible, certainly in the sprint races. Let's move on to Carlin then, and they've definitely got a great number one driver, which is Alex Lynn. He was third in a um, 2013 F3, the F3 class. Um, he's a rookie, but he's Red Bull backed, and I know anyone, any driver who is Red Bull backed has talent. They don't do it for the money for sure, and I think Alex probably has a lot of talent. He'll definitely be going for the championship this year. And if Carlin do produce a good car like they did um, sort of last year, that you know they finished. Um, Fourth in the standings. I think Carlin will want to be winning the championship this year, but they've kind of gone off. They used to be a massive force in a single seater racing. They've kind of gone off in recent years, but hopefully they can kick start their uh, get back to winning ways. Um, he's teammates with Emil Bernstoff and Luis de Silva. These two drivers quite slow, especially Luis de Silva is quite well known for being quite slow, even though he's always sort of been in a good car. He's never scored points. His 12th. Um, he was 12th at best last year, but he'll be hoping to score some points this year. But I don't think podiums or race wins are possible for him. Uh, moving on to Marusha Manor Racing, they've gone with Patrick Kulajala, Ryan Coolin, and Dean Stoman. Now I'm instantly drawn to Dean Stoman's name because this is just a guy who was battling with cancer 
Um, I think he had to give up racing from 2011 onwards. Then he came back in style last year with two races in the GP2, so the GP3 category. In um, the feature race in Abu Dhabi, he finished six. And then amazingly, in the sprint race in Abu Dhabi, he finished on the podium in second place. So what an achievement from him. I think he'll be going for the championship this year for sure. As to do with his teammates and Ryan Cullen, not really much known about him. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia page to basically sum it up. But he scored zero points last year with Marussia, where, you know, Theo Elenas was, you know, fighting for the championship. So I think Ryan Cullen's probably quite slow and not really going to, you know, be making a big impact or impression on his teammates. And then Kulajar is probably going to be quite an average driver. He raced with a Korean, oh, God. you have to tell me how to pronounce this name, guys, but uh, Korean GP. I'm just going to call it for now. Um, you know, he only finished 20th and didn't, you know, scored five points. So I think he needs an improved year. But I think Dean Stoneman is definitely a championship contender. Moving on to Hilma Motorsport, the Force India back team. And they've only gone with one driver so far. That's Ivan Taranov. The uh, remaining two drivers are TBA. This is a Russian guy. Um, he's going to be, at the moment, leading the team as it got no teammates. But uh, he came from Formula Renault. <clears throat> this is his rookie year in GP3. And we're hoping to impress. I'm moving on now to Gems and Motorsport, and they've gone with Paul Valhoek, Matthew Tusher, Adelie Fong as their three drivers. So uh, let's look at these three of them. Well, Paul actually won the uh, first ever GP3 race in 2010. So uh, look out for the Norwegian. He kind of, you know, his career derailed after uh, 2011 after an unsuccessful stint in GP2, but now he's bounced back, and he's only 23, so he's still got a bright future ahead of him. Tusher is a rookie, he did um, one race in Renault 3.5 last year, and Fong is Chinese, and he got two points in 2013 with status, which was actually a pretty good achievement considering status finished last in the championship last year, so I think Fong is actually probably the best of those three, and he'll be hoping to score some points for Jens and Motorsport, who, let's be honest, are not the best team. Moving on to Trident, then the second last team of our preview, and they've gone with Victor Carbone and Roman de Beer, the Brazilian and the South African um, Carbone was a former Indy Lights driver. He's a rookie to GP3 category this year, and De Beer is 19 and has not been in much, you know, not been in many much racing at all. He'll be hoping to make a name for himself, but I suspect that these two drivers could um, are going to be quite far off the pace, especially in a car that's definitely very far off the pace. So I think these two drivers you could be seeing definitely towards the back of the grid, fighting for the last few positions in the race. Moving on to Status Grand Prix, and they've got gone with Nick Yololi. Richie Stanway and Alfonso Celis Jr. So Nick Lowley then, well liked by a few people, I know Alex Zafro um, likes him. He raced with Carlin in 2013, he's 23 and uh, he's raced in GP2 for two years now in 2011 and 2013. He's got three podiums in that time. Um, quite an interesting driver, Nicky Lowley, because he's gone with status, but as we all know, status are not well known for scoring points. So I think it's going to be really hard for Lowley to actually to go for the championship. Um, go for wins, go for points even. So I think points is going to be at best um, what Nick Ritchie and Alfonso can hope for. But uh, let's go on and that's all the drivers then and teams. Let's go on with a quick um, preview of the calendar. So we start off this weekend on the 10th and 11th of May around Spain in Barcelona. The 21st and 22nd of June, GP3 go to Austria for the first time. Then on the 5th and 6th of July, it's time to go home back to Silverstone in the United Kingdom. Then on the 19th of July and 20th of July, we go to Germany around the Hockenheim Ring. Then it's Budapest for round five, 26th of July to 27th of July. On the weekend of the 23rd of August, we go to spa Frankenshop in Belgium. Then the third last race of the season is Italy, the 6th of September to the 7th of September. The penultimate race of the season is a Russian Grand Prix, the first time GP3 will ever go to Russia, just like F1, on the 11th of October and the 12th of October. And then the season rounds out in Abu Dhabi on the 22nd of November to the 23rd of November. Since this is an interesting calendar lineup, then we can visit two new tracks for GP3. So it'll be interesting to see how GP3 are going to adapt, just like how F1 will adapt. So I think there's quite a few um, good races here that we're going to be seeing. Um, it's quite funny to see that Monaco has actually been removed from the calendar after last year's fiasco. I'm not sure if it was actually ever, I don't think it was ever in actually GP3, but I think, you know, it's quite prevalent to see that Monaco is not on the calendar um, for GP3. Because, you know, last year, even in GP2, there was a massive first corner pileup, and it, quite frankly, it's dangerous. 
And just a point I'd like to come on to before I make my predictions about pay drivers and the quality of this year's grid. I don't think it's at all up to scratch to what we saw last year. With the absences of Ellie Nass, Connor Daly's moved up, Fiat's moved to Toro Rosso, you know, with Jack Harvey's moved to Indy, like it's just because he ran out of money. And that guy had talent. You know, Courageous left the GP3 series and then he moved to, you know, the Le Mans. We've lost a lot of drivers. Regalia moved up. Sainz Jr., you know, had a really unsuccessful time, but he's moved across now to a Formula Renault 3.5. But I think pay drivers are a real problem now, not just in F1, but in single-seater racing. It's really hurting the chances of some bright talent without any money to really break through GP2 and GP3 quickly to get into F1. So then, let's get on with the uh, final part of our video, which is the prediction video. Now, this took me quite a long time because I do not know the pace of any of the cars. I haven't even looked at the testing time, so I'm not sure who's going to have the pace. I'm really interested in hearing your opinion down in the comments. But just to round off this video, then, I've gone with Mardenborough, Lynn and Stoman. And then I'm going to go with Arden International, then ART, and then Carlin. So I've been smooth racing then, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.